Okay, 3.2.7. This is a Harlem Renaissance. Uh, yeah, Harlem Renaissance. Uh, this is going to be another quick video because we already talked about the Harlem Renaissance in class. So just kind of brushing up on some on some things that you may or may not remember, um, and a couple people that we didn't really talk about specifically, um, but they were talked about in the quiz. So you guys need to know them. So Harlem Renaissance. Um, we talked about it briefly for the video for a 3.2.2 quiz. Um, basically like a revival, a rebirth of black culture through music, song, dance, jazz, right? Poetry. Um, so anything that's artistic um, in nature, this is, that's what the Harlem Renaissance was about. It's just proving, I know the method was to prove to people that, you know, blacks can do anything the whites can, that we're, we're proving it. Um, just because whites do not believe that blacks have the talent and the know-how and the um, education to do things like this. So they're proving their worth and their equitable abilities um, through these artistic methods. So uh, this was possible because people got to Harlem in something that was called the Great Migration. That was, uh, that was when, and we talked about this in an earlier video, um, that was when in the South people were having a hard time with the Jim Crow laws, very, racist, prejudiced, and unfair towards blacks. So they moved north. Uh, most, a lot of them moved to Harlem because it was a cheap place and whites didn't want to go there. So blacks were able to congregate there and have like a little uh, black city there in Harlem. And that's where it started. Uh, the Harlem Renaissance was uh, started there. And so there's a couple of people we're going to talk about briefly and then we'll be done. Um, so I have some pictures for you guys. Okay, so this is Langston Hughes. He's a writer. You can see him with his typewriter there. He uh, wrote a lot of things. He has um, a poem that's the most famous poem that a, a black person has ever had. Um, you know, he his writings were shared across the nation. So he really, you know, was a big name at the time. So that's Lakes and Hughes. He was a writer. Don't forget that. That's why I have that picture of him with his typewriter. Um, and then we have Bessie Smith. She was a jazz singer. Um, she was very popular because uh, she used her position. And honestly, all of these guys did. Um, they are using their popularity. Uh, as as these artists to really push forward the thinking of blacks are just as good as whites and we're proving it to you and last oh no not last okay arthur schomburg so he's the one who advocated that um, african history not only should be included um, in world history but also should be studied separately as well because um, then it'll get the true focus that it deserves because there's so much of world history and U.S. history that is focused in Africa. So you could cover a lot of the world's history just by focusing on Africa. Um, so he is a writer as well. Um, so it doesn't say that right here, but he is a writer as well. Or he wrote some pretty good things too. Um, and lastly, we have Aaron Douglas. He's an artist. You can see one of his paintings right here. Um, he even did some paintings for the president at the time. Uh, he is showing the, the colors and the shapes of Africa and just showing how powerful African art can be. Um, and they were, you know, put up everywhere. These are in museums today. So um, that's basically it for 3.2.7, just talking about some of those uh, famous uh, black artists and, and uh, writers, musicians, um, and what the Harlem Renaissance is all about. And you remembered all that from uh, when we were in class. So that's it for that, that, that quiz.